Hello everyone and welcome back. So today we are going to get a build.gradle file so that we can actually build and distribute our mod. And uh, before I go any further, I would like to apologize for the long lapse in the tutorial series or any activity on my YouTube channel at all. Uh, if you saw the update video, I've recently started working full time, so I have even less time to devote to this sort of thing. So a couple of little things. Uh, I think I talked about the contents of the Forge folder before, but uh, there's the usual stuff like the config file. If you need to test config file changes, you can go in here. The mods folder will let you install other mods. I strongly recommend you put JEI in there. Uh, this is a problem that I kind of had with some of the earlier stuff where I forgot to mention that you could give yourself your item with the give command or with JEI and people were asking, how do I get the item? But I, I think I've mentioned all that before. Finally, if you want to run a debug server or whatever you want to call it, you have to open the eula.txt and change the false here to true like I've done. Okay, so I I've actually watched a... Um, another tutorial series a little bit, and uh, it was kind of interesting. Instead of creating new projects like I have over here, uh, this person just basically used the MDK example project, and that decreases setup time. The obvious disadvantage is that you can only have one mod in each environment, so... I don't know, if you're only developing a single mod, that could be great. That cuts down the setup time, it, it just makes things a little bit easier. Personally, um, I like having the ability to have multiple projects all working together. So, really, there's multiple ways to set up this stuff. Uh, I cover the way I like to do it. And uh, there was also some comment about a way that could potentially bypass the manual editing of the .class path files. I don't remember what exactly it said. If I remember, I'll put the comment up on screen or something like that. So that's uh, another potential improvement to the way this project or my projects have been set up. But uh, I don't have time to test it at the moment. Okay, so I think I've covered everything I wanted to here. So now this is a part where I'm not quite sure about... Let's see. Yeah, I think we've actually got the Gradle wrapper in this folder here. So I'm going to select this Gradle folder and uh, let me actually just double check to make sure I've got the right thing. So we need the Gradle folder, the build.gradle obviously, which is not part of the wrapper, but we do need that. Gradle W, Gradle W dot bat. Uh, in my case, we don't really need the Gradle W file because that's a, a Linux script, I assume. Yes. But let's go ahead and try copying these from the Forge folder and see if they work. Okay, so again, we're grabbing the build.gradle file and all the stuff for the Gradle wrapper. So the Gradle folder and the two Gradle W scripts. Or whichever one you need. I'm going to grab both. So let's go into our mods folder and just paste them right here. So now we need to modify our build.gradle file with a few things. And again, I'm not an expert on Gradle, but uh, I know enough to make things work. And uh, here's actually the Gradle file from Gems. It's a bit longer than the default one here, I think. Yeah, because I've got dependencies and stuff like that. So I encourage you to go look through the Gradle files of other mods, that's what I did. But uh, we'll just try to do something very basic here. And if you're wondering how to do dependencies, usually the mods will tell you how to do that. I mean, like JEI, I think it has instructions on their GitHub or somewhere. It doesn't take long to find. 
Okay, so don't touch any of that. All right, so here we've got the version of our mod. Um, you, you can read about version numbering somewhere. I normally, whenever a mod's in beta, I'll do like 0 0.1.0 0 and increment this number whenever there's a relatively minor change. In it. Let me see if there's a way I can increase the text size here. Actually, better yet, maybe I should just edit this in Eclipse. Okay, and just drag this here. There we go, so it's all nice and big. I know, I know, I've gotten lots of complaints about the text size. You don't have to remind me. I've got a 1440p monitor, so sue me. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just do 1.0.0, and as I was saying, I like to change this number whenever there's a minor change, like an, a new version that's being released. This one, whenever there's a more significant change, but uh, not compatibility breaking. And this one, whenever there's a compatibility breaking change, aside from the transitioning to beta to release. So, for example, most of my mods are 1 point something. Gems is 2 point something right now because it had compatibility breaking changes in 2.0. So, this is going to be basically the package that we had for our mod. So, mine was like this. And finally, we've got our mod ID. And I also put the version number on this. And... This doesn't have to match your mod ID exactly, and in fact, I'm going to use a capital letter. The source compatibility line, we can change this if we need the mod to compile with something higher than Java 6. So, right now it's set to 1.6, that means Java 6. If you needed the features of Java 8, you can change that to 1.8. Actually, I've never seen this compiled Java block before. I guess you would need to change that as well. Okay. But yeah, the, the build script from Gems is actually a bit different. It does that. I'm not sure what the difference between the two is. Okay, so if you copied your build.gradle from your Forge directory just now, the Minecraft version will be correct. The run directory, I'm not sure about it. Gems, that's been changed to Eclipse. We'll go ahead and leave that for now. The mappings again should be correct because I just copied them from the Forge directory. And I believe that's all we need to change here. So I believe I've already added the mcmod.info file that again goes in resources and looks a little something like this. Let's see, yeah, I can increase the text size like that. Is there an easy way to switch that back? No. Maybe. Probably. I don't know the shortcut. Okay, so let's try building this mod. So in this directory where our build.gradle is, let's go ahead and open a command prompt window or terminal or whatever shell you are, you have for your operating system. And we're going to do gradle w build. And with any luck, this should work. So it's going to create a new folder. And we will find out very quickly whether or not this works. Well, since it's the first time, it may have to... Yeah, it's having to download some stuff, but... Otherwise, a mod this small is going to build very quickly. So, now we got this new build folder. We go into libs. And that's our mod, which is... Um, I don't know why I got the mod ID thing. I know I changed it right here. Okay, apparently editing, maybe I just didn't save. Okay, let's try this again. One more time. All right, there we go. So 
here's the first build of our tutorial mod and you can go ahead and copy that jar drop it into any minecraft instance and it should load up with no issues assuming your mod worked in your development environment and it's also got a sources jar here which contains the sources for the mod which it can be useful to release in some cases. So that's it, we've got a mod that builds. Remember to save your work, it, it, it has an effect. <laughs> okay, is there anything else? Now obviously there's a lot more you can do with the build.gradles. One thing we can do is we can make a deobfuscated jar like that. And again, you can add dependencies, which normally the mods that you'll want to add a dependency for will just, they'll have instructions for how to, to add this to your build.gradle. And I will probably make a video covering using APIs at some point. Another way you can have dependencies is to have a libs folder in the same folder as your build.gradle put any mods in there that you need and that should work without any changes to the build.gradle. Okay, so one other thing that I would like to cover is change logs. So I normally keep a plain text file called something like changelog.txt in my mods folder and that gets uploaded to GitHub. You can go on to the repos of any of my mods and view the change log. And I adopted a, si a style similar to what uh, Open Computers does in its change logs. So here's an example, and I guess that's too small, isn't it? Let's do it this way. So basically, I just have each version listed, each released version. So for example, the most recent that was released is 2.2.9. And you'll see a, some keyword at the beginning like fixed, changed, added, and then whatever was fixed, changed, or added after that. And it's just a good way to keep track of what you've done. Obviously, you don't have to do this, but uh, I, I believe in documenting my work. So here it is. I, this is how I maintain the changelog. And uh, you can see I've been keeping this for quite a while not not forever it goes back to 1.2.07 but still a fairly long file but one other thing i don't know if i mentioned this but i actually updated the make json script so that it actually supports forge block states with variants and I think the, the, version, the version in the tutorial directory is working correctly, and this may already be on GitHub, I'm not sure. But uh, we will get to blocks with metadata probably soon. I think I'm going to do items with metadata next. I know I, I said I would do a tile entity soon, but that's proving to be a bit too much of a workload for me at the moment so i'm going to do a couple of things that i i know very well so that's all for this video probably a bit on the short side compared to the others but that's not a bad thing so thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one